In this session, we'll be discussing about kingdom fungus. Now, I've already mentioned you kingdom fungus. They belong to multicellular eukaryotes. Those are also heterotrophic. Now, multicellular eukaryotes, what we talked about in earlier sessions were prokaryotes and eukaryotes, those were unicellular. But today, we'll be discussing about the eukaryotes, those are multicellular and apart from multicellular, they are heterotrophic. So when they are heterotrophic, they are said to be achlorophilous. Chlorophyllous means they have the chlorophyll. When they are achlorophilous, they don't have chlorophyll. When you talk about fungus, when you see what is happening here, they are, that is what I've told you, they are heterotrophic in nature. The mode of nutrition present in them is heterotrophic. They can obtain the food either from like being the saprophytes, being the parasites, or even they show the symbiotic relationship. So all three modes of heterotrophic mode of nutrition are present in kingdom fungus. The body is thalloid. Now when thalloid word comes, it means there are no root, stem and leaves. So the body is just like thallus and the body is haploid. They will always maintain this haploid nature. So fungus are always haploid. Now, the fungus are present everywhere. They are seen in every nook and cranny of the system. So they are omnipresent. Remember these two words, which are very important. One is cosmopolitan and ubiquitous. So ubiquitous and cosmopolitan are means the, the organisms, those are found everywhere. Bacteria are also omnipresent. Bacteria are also cosmopolitan. Remember this particular thing that the fungus are cosmopolitan in nature, that they are found in almost every place, but they always prefer warm and humid places. Remember this condition? They always prefer warm, warm conditions and humid conditions. The best temperature for fungus is around 28 degrees centigrade. So wherever it gets the moisture, fungus comes and attacks on it. Now, when you look forward for the common fungi, which we all also see in your you know, daily life, it must be moles on the bread or maybe the mushroom what you eat. So these are some of the common fungi which, which are generally seen in our daily life. If we talk about fungus are mostly filamentous. They are filamentous because they are also multicellular. But yeast is the member in kingdom fungus which is not multicellular. It is single celled fungus. Now I'll be detailing you about yeast in the next sessions, but we'll be talking about like the filamentous fungus. Now, when you talk about there are some fungus which will be causing disease. So one very important disease is wheat rust, which has been caused by Puccinia graminis frutica. This particular Puccinia, it infects the wheat and causes different types of rust. There are fungus which are used for the production of antibiotics, which the drug I have told you once was penicillin, which is used to kill bacteria, is obtained from penicillium. So penicillium notatum or penicillium chrysogenum are the fungal species which will be giving you the drug penicillium, which will be what you call, which will be giving you the drug called penicillin, which will be inhibiting the growth of bacteria. When you look forward, there are unicellular fungus, which I've already told you is yeast. So yeast is uh, what you call use for making of bread and beer. The yeast is, yeast is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which will be used for the manufacturing of bread and beer. The very time you talk about the fungal body, it is long, it is slender, and the threads are there, which are called hyphae. Now how these hyphae are what you call man maintained, Let's suppose you have the fungus because fungus they always reproduce with the help of spores. So let's suppose the spore is falling somewhere. The spore will be falling onto the particular place where it takes the nutrients from. And this particular place is called substratum. So now what happens? The fungus will be sucking up the nutrients from the substratum and the fungus will be growing in the form of hyphae. You see there are like the, let's suppose this was the spore which has grown into one hyphae. This was the spore which has grown into one hyphae. So let's suppose this is also the spore which has grown into one hyphae. This was also the one spore which has grown into hyphae. So there are like many hyphae grown and hyphae are unicellular. So these hyphae are forming because of the spores are getting germinated. Now what would happen? There would be cross-linking among the hyphae. Let's suppose there are many hyphae. So the hyphae will what? Will cross-link with each other. The very time they will cross-link with each other, they'll become multicellular and this cross-linking it's called mycelium. So mycelium is the network of hyphae. There are many hyphae combined and they are forming you the mycelium. Now this mycelium can be of two types. One is septic mycelium. Another is what you call aseptic mycelium, which is also called xenocytic hypha. 
Now what happens, let me tell you, because the hyphae were combining, let's suppose, let me give you the figure like that, let's suppose there are hyphae, and these hyphae are combining, they are like, this is this was one hyphae, this is another hyphae, this is another hyphae, but they are not septa between the hyphae, so this hyphae will have one nucleus, this hyphae will have another nucleus, this hyphae will have one more nucleus, like that, there are many nucleus in the hyphae, and let's suppose there are no septa between these hyphae, this becomes multinucleated what you call mycelia and this particular multinucleated hypha it's called xenocytic hypha but let's suppose there are septa among the hyphae like, like you like you see the hyphae are separated if they are separated that is called septate mycelia so there is a septate mycelia which is multinucleated and there is a septate mycelia which which can be uninucleated or it can also be what you call uh, you know dicarion stage dicarion stage means there will be like two nuclear setting per hyphae so we'll be detailing about what happens into like you know dicarion stage and what happens in monocarion stage so we discussed about that hyphae are formed by the termination of spores when these hyphae are formed these hyphae will be forming the cross linking which is called mycelia and mycelia are of two types so mycelia can be septate mycelia can be aseptic mycelia Aseptate mycelia don't have the septa because of that the condition comes as multinucleated and multinucleated condition is also called xenocytic mycelia. What happens in septate hypha that these hypha will be separated with the help of septa. Now per hyphae they can be having what you call one nucleus which is called monokaryotic stage. There can be two nuclei per hypha that is called dicaryon stage. When you really look forward, because the hypha I've told you, like let's suppose this is these are the hypha, and let's suppose this these are separated by this particular septa. The septa is not continuous. There are septal pore present in the septa. So the, there are there may be like a pore between the septa, so as to maintain the conti, uh, what you call the maintain the con continuity of cytoplasm from one hypha to another hypha. You can look there is this break, so that the continuity among the cyto, what you call cytoplasm is maintained. Now there can be a simple central pore in case of ascomycetes. Ascomycetes is one among the members, what, what you call one among the what you call fungus uh, type. And when you talk about basidiomycetes, they have a very important thing which is called dolly pore septa. Now dolly pore septa is barrel shaped septa. So remember that you basically have septa and in the septa you will have a septal pore. There is a simple central pore in case of ascomycetes. But there is a special pore which is called dolly pore which is barrel shaped which is present in basidiomycetes. This is what I've already told you they can be monokaryotic means one nuclear one nucleus per hypha. They can be dicaryotic means dicaryotic situation it's like this when you will have two nuclei per hypha. When you talk further the fungus cell wall is very important it is made up of chitin. The bacterial cell wall was made up of peptidoglycans. So this fungus cell wall is made up of chitin which is also called fungal cellulose. Now remember this is not, not the cellulose. Chitin is never the cell cellulose. Chitin is the what you call polysaccharide of an acetyl glucosamine and chitin is not the cellulose. Now chitin is present in the cell wall of fungus except this particular class which is called oomycetes. Remember this oomycetes members are all, also called algal fungi. Because they have the cell wall which is also present in what you call algae, they have the cell wall which is made up of cellulose. If someone would ask you, uh, which fungus, which particular class of fungus will you be finding cellulosic cell wall, your answer comes as oomycetes. Chitin will be present in all other classes. So leaving oomycetes, all other classes of fungus will be basically having the cell wall which is made up of chitin. When you talk about Golgi body, now when you talk about Golgi body, the Golgi body is made up of many cisternae. Cisternae are the repeating units, those are arranging in parallel stacks and they make Golgi body. So generally in our body some 4 to 8 cisternae are present and they make the Golgi body. But remember in fungus the Golgi body is just one cisternae, it is unicisternal Golgi body. Stored food of fungus is glycogen and oil. They store the food in, uh, in the form of glycogen and oil. One very important thing which occurs here is karyokarosis mitosis. Now what is karyokarosis? Karyokarosis encounters the intranuclear spindle formation. You must be knowing about spindle fiber formation during mitosis. What happens is the nuclear membrane dissolves and spindles are formed to attach with the chromosome. But here, the nuclear, member, no, nuclear membrane will never dissolve. When it will not dissolve, why? Because the spindles are forming inside the nucleus.
If you look further, there are many uses of the fungus, but there are harmful effects of the fungus also. One of the very important diseases you must have learned about, athlete's foot. So athlete's foot is because of one of the deuteromycetes member, but there are many uses like medicine, food, you will have the ecological values, like most of the fungus, they work as decomposers. Many of them, they also fix nitrogen, can be symbiotically, can be asymbiotically, but there are some problems also, like some of the strains are very deadly. Athlete's foot, I have told you about what you see here is athlete's foot is happening. They destroy the books, they destroy crops. So there are many uses, there are many problems related with the fungus. In next session, we'll be telling you about different nutrients or nutritional activities in fungus.